So now in this video, we're going to look at the uh, 74HC04. So there's a number of different versions. This one's HC. I also have the LS version. And first thing we're going to actually look at is floating inputs. So really, you don't want to leave the inputs floating. You can see we don't have anything wired up. We have a 10 kilo ohm resistor there. That's much less than a uh, one milliamp of current. And you can see a bunch of current. Also, as I kind of waver around near the integrated circuit, it's picking up stray signals. And if you see CC up there, that means we uh, hit the limit of uh, what I have set for the power supply. And we almost uh, got up there. But in uh, any case, what we're gonna do is wherever you see A, that is an input, we're gonna take a 10 kilo ohm resistor and for each input, there you go. It, I'm kind of, kind of at an angle, it was a little hard to see where it was, but uh, wherever there's an input, I'm gonna put a 10 kilo ohm resistor to the positive rail, right there, and it's every other one right now. And then up here, pretty straightforward, this top one up here is the input, and then I go down two more. And you can already see, we have hardly any current, but again, we can still uh, get that to show up. So any unused inputs should be tied, I think it's usually to the uh, positive rail, but you definitely want it to be, uh, Distinct. So there we go. We have uh, zero milliamps of current right there, and uh, stray signals are not being affected. So that's a good idea. Of course, we're going to remove this one and use that particular NOT gate right there for the rest of the video. So now, what the NOT gate does, and there's six of them in there. We're only going to use the uh, the bottom one, as I said before. So input above output. It takes the uh, input and so one for this circuit is going to be five volts and then zero is going to be zero volts or ground the negative rail right there so whatever you feed whether it's a one or a zero to the uh, input you'll have the opposite at the output so we're going to uh, demonstrate that with uh, first just this resistor and LED we're going to wire that to the output so I'm going to take a 220 ohm resistor we're working with five volts. I'm going to put that one spot, I think I'll put it over here, one spot away from the jumper there and we're going to take an LED so the long lead, the anode needs to be towards the output, short lead the cathode to the negative rail. So the shorter lead is going to that jumper there. In fact I'm going to move it down here because we're going to add a little bit more. So right now the output's high but you can kind of see it flickering. That's because we have stray signals. We don't have a distinct signal at the input. So I'm going to take the 10 kilo ohm resistor and you can see with a high input, now the LED is off. That's because the output's low. It's connected to ground basically. If I go to the negative rail, there you can see we got a negative coming in. So out is positive. Other side of the load is negative. So it powers it up. And we will look at the current needed. So 11 milliamps while well, the LED is on, and none while well, the LED is off, as long as it's not floating. We talked about that a little bit ago, and so we don't need the resistor. I'll take the jumper to the positive rail, put that to the input, and there you can see no current. But if I move it over to the negative, now we have that 11 milliamps. So it doesn't take current in, it's kind of like a capacitor, it builds up and releases a charge or whatnot. But uh, really, there's practically no current flow at all when it comes to the input. It's just telling basically the output what to do. So now, as you can see here, we have this resistor and LED. And uh, they're both going to be 220 ohms, by the way, because we're dealing with 5 volts. I should have wrote that down. But in uh, any case, this LED, you can see, is facing the other way. It's coming from the uh, positive rail when it goes towards the output, depending on... Uh, how you're looking at it. Everything's kind of relative. So, in any case, we're going to take the uh, long lead now and put that to the jumper that goes to the positive rail. That's why I kind of wanted to leave this space open. Short lead, the cathode is up one row, and we're going to take a 220 ohm resistor. So, again, we're going to the same output and then to the LED. So, now they have uh, different uh, polarities right there. And the uh, input we can either go positive which will give negative there 
and then that LED will light up, which we will do right now. We'll just move the jumper to the positive rail. And when we're about halfway, it's uh, indecisive and uh, maybe alternating because there's uh, stray signals going both directions. But you can see that when we go to positive, the output's negative. So we got the positive uh, lighting an LED, and uh, if we go negative to the input, now we have a positive output because the other side of the LED is to the negative rail there. So we know that the output is positive. And so now the next thing we're going to do is look at this trim pot here. So the trim pot can go anywhere from 5 volts to 0 volts. Lately we've been going to a strictly 5 volts or 0 volts. This is not a Schmidt trigger based uh, not gate integrated circuit and so there's a little bit of difference. This one's not as distinct as we will see. So I'm going to pluck this jumper there and uh, there you can see it's indecisive right now which uh, it can also be with the Schmidt trigger because it can be bouncing back and forth. But here you can see now with uh, the varying voltage since it's not a Schmidt trigger it can be in a kind of an iffy state and so if you need more distinctness you need a Schmidt trigger but in any case I'm going to raise the voltage up and so we got uh, positive input and uh, so negative output that's why it's headed towards the positive rail when it comes to which LED lit up and then now we go to the negative and uh, so that means the output will be positive and positive will head to negative so that LED lights up and uh, so in any case we have this kind of a halfway point and also current may also flow through there and so we can just pluck an LED and see what uh, change we get I don't know what happened there there you go so let's try to pluck it without knocking that LED out of the way and there you can see it kept its brightness so it's not due to the fact that currents running through there it's actually what the output is it's in a state where it's probably around 2.5 volts at the output so it's not a Schmidt trigger where it clearly goes one way or the other the output is more iffy so you got to be aware of that if you need a Schmidt trigger or not for your particular circuit so in any case that is uh, it for this video I think I covered everything please check out one of the other videos I'm posting and click the subscribe button if you haven't and also click the bell so you see all my videos so thanks for watching I got a bunch of these integrated circuits I hope to do a bunch more videos on them in uh, the future I have a lot of fun with these so I hope you enjoy the video too see you in the next one